Good day, dear students. This is the video on renin angiotensin system. I'm Dr. Swapnil Parlekar. We know that we need blood pressure to maintain flow to overcome resistance. And this flow is necessary to supply blood to the tissues so that enough oxygen is provided to the tissues. Now think for a moment, why do we need to increase blood pressure sometimes. We need to increase blood pressure. Think for a moment. You have heard and learned about the fight or flight response. So when one is running away from a predator or chasing a prey, this is in the old saber tooth curriculum of the saber tooth tiger. So when one is running away from the predator or chasing a prey, one needs to increase blood pressure. That stimulates the fight or flight response. In the current context, when you are preparing for a test, you are anxious, you are appearing for a test or you are eager to attend the 9 a.m. class, then your fight or flight response is likely to be activated, resulting in an increase in blood pressure. And there is a principle in the body that if a job is worth doing, the body has more than one way of doing it. This is known as the Kamro principle. We know very well that blood pressure is increased by many mechanisms. For example, the baroreceptors maintain second to second regulation of the blood pressure. When one is standing up from a sitting position, the blood pressure is increased by the baroreceptors. Similarly, other cardiovascular reflexes like the chemoreceptors also increase blood pressure. So do the CNS ischemic response and the Cushing's reflex. There are several other mechanisms that is involved in long-term regulation, which we'll study, which also either increase or decrease blood pressure. So if a job is worth doing, the body has more than one way of doing it. So these are some of the abnormal stimuli, apart from which I talk like being anxious for a test or taking a test or getting late for a lecture, these are abnormal stimuli, hemorrhage, diarrhea and vomiting, which decrease the extracellular fluid volume and hence lead to stress in the body. And these are the very stimuli which activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So the stimuli for renin is a decrease in extracellular fluid volume, which is sensed by the macula densa. The macula densa is a part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. A decrease in blood pressure is sensed by intrarenal baroreceptors. These intrarenal baroreceptors are part of the glomerular cells or the juxtaglomerular cells which release renin. And in addition, Increased sympathetic activity, there is a dense sympathetic innervation to the granular cells. So, these granular cells are the one which release renin. So, these stimuli decrease in extracellular fluid volume, say, due to loss of blood, due to large amounts of diarrhea or vomiting, result in the release of renin. In addition, they result in decrease in blood pressure and increase in sympathetic activity. These two stimuli are sensed by three separate receptors. A decrease in extracellular fluid volume is sensed by the macula densa. A decrease in blood pressure is sensed by intrarenal baroreceptors. An increased sympathetic activity acts directly on the granular cells, which release renin. Now, this renin starts an entire sequence of events. So, Renin acts on angiotensinogen, which is released by the liver to form angiotensin 1. And angiotensin 1 is acted upon by angiotensin converting enzyme, which is released by the lungs when angiotensin 1 encounters the first major mass of endothelium in the lungs. The endothelium releases 
angiotensin converting enzyme and resulting in the formation of angiotensin 2. There are drugs which inhibit the angiotensin converting enzyme like captopril and enalapril. And these cause productive cough. So, because they also inhibit bradykine, so they cause troublesome cough in the lungs. And this effect is now overcome by angiotensin 2 receptor blockers like losartan, candesartan, and valsartan. We'll study them later in this video. So, the actions of angiotensin 2 is that it stimulates the release of aldosterone. What does aldosterone do? Aldosterone increases the reabsorption of sodium and hence water from the distal nephron. It increases the reabsorption of sodium and water from the distal nephron. It constricts the efferent arterioles. Constriction of efferent arterioles increases the reabsorption of sodium from the proximal tubule. increases reabsorption of sodium from the distal nephron and from the proximal nephron and potent constriction of the blood vessels which causes vasoconstriction and this increases blood pressure. So both all these stimuli together increase blood pressure. The receptors for angiotensin 2 are 81 receptors and 80 two receptors. 81 receptors are present on all blood vessels and 82 are present in fetal life. But now it is known that 82 receptors are also cause coronary vasodilation and have a protective effect against the deleterious growth promoting effects of angiotensin 2. There are drugs which block the 81 receptors and hence they block the effects of angiotensin 2. What does angiotensin 2 do? Eventually, it leads to increase in blood pressure. Therefore, these 81 receptor blockers are used in the treatment of hypertension called essential hypertension. Essential because it does not have any identifiable cause in young adults. That is those below 55 years old. These drugs are Losartan, Candesartan, Valsartan, Telmisartan, and so on. These are used first-line agents in the treatment of essential hypertension in young adults, those below 55 years of age. So the take-home points are that an increase in sympathetic nervous system activity is the main stimulus for the release of renin. Renin starts the entire sequence of events. It is converted into angiotensin 1, which is then converted to angiotensin 2 in the lungs by angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin 2 has the following effects. It increases potent, causes potent peripheral vasoconstriction, thereby increasing blood pressure. It constricts the efferent arterioles of the nephron and thereby results in increased reabsorption of sodium from the proximal tube. It stimulates the release of aldosterone which increases the reabsorption of sodium from the distal tubule and it has deleterious growth promoting effects on the heart. So thank you and have a good day.